Agriculture is the largest human activity on the Earth's surface. And therefore, it has the greatest impact on environmental quality. About 37% of the Earth's surface is under some form of agricultural production. Now there is a remaining area of, of significant size, the land reserve that could be exploited for agriculture. But in general, these lands have either poor soil, poor climate, or are home to the remnant natural rainforests, wetlands, and savannas that are the bastions, in fact, the last bastions for many plant and animal species that are, are threatened. So the big picture is that we must increase food uh, production about 60 to 80 percent in the next 50 years to meet demand from a, an increasing, expanding human population that is going to be wealthier. And we must do this on existing farmland so that we don't um, in expand agriculture to exploit the remaining natural ecosystems on the planet. If we critically examine trends in nutrient use efficiency during the recent past, we find evidence of both good news, bad news, and then again, more good news. The first good news is that farmers have been uh, steadily increasing nitrogen use efficiency and yields concomitantly for the past 30 years. For example, in the United States, corn yields have been increasing by about 1.5 bushels per year per acre, which is about 100 kilograms of grain per hectare per year. And at the same time, they've been increasing nitrogen efficiency. We measure nitrogen efficiency simply by looking at the amount of grain produced per unit of fertilizer applied. And by this efficiency ratio, we find that maize farmers, corn farmers in the United States, have increased efficiency by about 30%, 36% since 1980. That is from 42 uh, kilograms of grain per kilogram of N applied in 1980 to about 57 kilograms of grain produced per kilogram of N fertilizer applied today. Despite the success story, there's also bad news. And the bad news is that current levels of nitrogen fertilizer efficiency probably aren't good enough to protect environmental quality. Indeed, when we make on-farm measurements of nitrogen use efficiency in the United States, we find that only about 40% of the applied in is actually being taken up by the crop and used. That means the remaining 60% is at risk for losses, either to leaching, volatilization, denitrification, uh, or runoff. Getting back to the good news, it looks as though there's still substantial opportunities to, in, to continue their increases in nitrogen use efficiency. And indeed, to do that while also increasing yields. In the field behind me, here, you see in a field experiment that is explicitly designed to gain better understanding, basic fundamental understanding of the environmental and management controls on achieving yields that approach the genetic yield potential ceiling, while at the same time achieving nitrogen fertilizer efficiencies that are double what the average farmer achieves today. This experiment is one that we've established um, with a group of researchers from a number of disciplines because the issues are very complex and involve um, issues that require uh, different perspectives and different scientific disciplines and with funding from, uh, in part from the, the uh, fertilizer industry, we've been very fortunate to conduct this study over the past uh, five years. We're finding that our, our basic knowledge of high yield systems is rather primitive, but this, despite this state of knowledge, we're still finding some very promising uh, 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 new ideas about high yield systems. The first is that we've documented that it is indeed possible to raise yield substantially for example, we're consistently getting uh, yields that are about uh, 250 bushels per acre, which is 65% uh, greater than average farm yields, and at the same time achieving nitrogen fertilizer efficiencies that are 25 to 80% greater than average farm nitrogen efficiencies. And the key to doing this in this system is to achieve synchrony between the nitrogen supply from both fertilizer and 
native soil resources, and crop demand. I see no reason why agriculture can't contribute to protection of water quality and biodiversity, to improving soil quality, to contributing and reducing our reliance on fossil fuels by producing bioenergy and doing it in systems that have an, a large net surplus of energy when we consider all of the energy inputs, including nitrogen fertilizer, to the system to produce the grain and all of the nitrogen uh, energy outputs that are contained in the grain, for instance, to make ethanol. I think if we take this proactive stance and not seek simply to minimize the damage from agriculture to the environment, but look upon agriculture as indeed um, a source of improvement of the environment, that at the end of the day there's tremendous potential to get environmental uh, um, action groups that to this point in time have really not been allies of agriculture. In fact, maybe they've seen agriculture as a villain. But if we can actually make progress and strides towards these goals uh, of, of having agriculture proactively contribute to a better environment, I think there's a potential to ultimately have environmentalists as some of our strongest allies for agriculture and agricultural industries.